please let me know. Um, basically, ladies and gentlemen, when doing a problem like this, what we're going to simply do is, again, as I talked about, you want to make sure when, you're, when we say you know, multiply by the super bowl, you're multiplying by the super bowl of your divisor. What are you dividing by, right? This is this divided by that. So you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this. Now, so I'm going to write y plus 2 divided by 2y squared minus 3y minus 2 times y squared plus y minus 6 divided by y squared minus 4. Okay. Now it just comes into factoring. All right. Now I'm going to leave the hardest factoring technique uh, to the end. Over here, we, have, we can use our diamond again, negative 6 and positive 1. What two numbers multiply to give you negative 6? Add to give you positive 1. Again, guys, when you're multiplying to get a negative, 1 has to be negative, 1 has to be positive. Since they're adding to give you positive 1, you have positive 3, negative 2, right? So y plus 3 times y minus 2. Then automatically, any time I see two terms, I either think factoring out the GCF or difference of two squares. And is y squared a, a squared term? Is 4 a squared number term? Yeah, so I can apply the difference of two squares. a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b, which I wrote down last, last video. So this would be y minus 2 times y plus 2. All right? Times, I can't simplify anything of y plus 2. And then this one, I have 2y minus 3y minus 2. Um, yes, you guys, ladies and gentlemen, we can use the diamond method, but um, I always like to sometimes, uh, you know, at this point in the game, we practice the diamond method and then using the box. You guys are absolutely welcome to use that, especially today, um, even though I don't think I gave you any of these types of problems. Um, but it's important for you guys to understand which ones, which ones are going to factor. So if I have this, I know that my two numbers that are going to multiply to give me negative 2 are going to be a negative 2 and positive 1. And um, so it can either be, so 1 has to be negative, 1 has to be positive. So basically, I have four options. I could multiply, I could have negative 2 and positive 1. It could look like that. But if I do that, remember what you're doing is we know that the last two, term, last two numbers give me negative 2, and the first two terms give me 2y squared. But I want to be able to add up the middle terms to give me a negative 3y. Well, if I want them to add up to give me a negative 3y, what I notice here is this gives me a negative 2. This gives me a positive 2, which would actually give me go to 0. So what I kind of just looked at in my head is if I did a negative 2 and a positive 1 over here. Now I have 2y times negative 2, which is a negative 4. y times 1, which is a positive 1, which gives me negative 3y, which is exactly my correct version. So therefore, I have 2y plus 1 times y minus 2. Now, again, when we go ahead and look at this, we just factor out our terms. y plus 2, y plus 2. I could, no, I can't factor out 2 here. And it looks like that's it. So my final answer is y plus 3 divided by 2y minus 1 and y minus 2, where y cannot equal a negative 1 half, positive 2, and a negative 2. What do you mean 2y plus 1? 2y plus 1, yes. So that would be a positive. Oh, no, it's a negative. Huh? All right.